Hey, welcome to the VHF UHF channel and this is tip number 22 and it comes from a question from a viewer that was asking what's the difference between a digital scanner, a trunk scanner and a regular scanner radio? I don't get the drift. So I don't have a digital one to show up but I will start with that one because it's the one that I don't have. A digital scanner is referred to a scanner that can actually decode digital modes that are used today. For example, P25 is an example. It's used by a lot of services. Now, it could be encrypted or not. And if it's encrypted, possibly you can't hear what's there. But if it's not encrypted, um, basically it's a series of, it's data. You will hear some kind of digital signal. But when you tune it, your digital scanner will be able to take that and actually uh, transfer that digital buzz into audio that you can listen to. So there's a lot of digital scanners today. Uh, they have a lot, some have a lot of modes. Examples of digital scanners, the uh, Whistler TRX-1 and 2, the um, ICOM ICR-30 is another example. I know that Uniden has uh, several of these. And so if in your area some of the services have gone digital, that means you can maybe tune them in still, but with that new type, more modern type of, of receiver. Keep in mind, it does not decrypt. So if these services are encrypted, it's different. Encryption and digital signals are not the same thing. Then you've got trunk scanners. What are those? Well, this is one. This is a trunk scanner I purchased a long time ago. So a lot of services are still analog in nature, meaning that you can tune them on with pretty much any types of scanners, but they use a system called trunking. Trunking is a way to put a lot of users on one system. Because if you, in, in the old days, if you had 50 different services, they were on 50 different frequencies. So you would have to program all 50 of them. When they were on repeaters, it was getting complicated because if you wanted to have services on computers that, that on repeaters, that repeater had to have 50 input output frequencies that would be different so that nobody overlaps each other because everybody needs to be in the clear and not interfered with another signal. So they invented something called trunking, which is a computer based system. That means that the radio, this tanner, for example, listens to a control channel. The control channel tells this radio where the users are on what frequency. So if you have 50 users, you don't need 50 frequencies anymore because the idea behind trunking is that not everybody is transmitting at the same time. Yes, if all of them do, you got a problem. But 90% 99% of the time, users don't all broadcast at the same time. So that means you can use 20 channels for 50 users and trunk them. That means once somebody transmits, it sends to the repeater a signal. The repeater will assign it a frequency for the output and will tell all the other radios that are capable of listening to the control channel. Oh, that's the frequency where this transmission is going on right now. And if a second user does this, it will assign a different frequency so that there's no interference. And that's pretty much the, 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 the easy way to kind of explain trunking. That means that you have five or six people talking and they will be assigned automatically frequencies because the control channel will tell the device for example, in this case, if I listen to some services, if I press the trunk button, what's going to happen is it's going to lock on the code or the, the identification of that um, service. And it will follow the conversation because it can listen to the control channel and know what frequency the conversation is going to. So you have more users, you need less frequencies, it costs less, and you can still have um, you know, conversations without interference. 
So that's a trunk scanner. Trunk scanner will be able to follow a conversation. Because if you don't have a trunk scanner but listen in, you'll still hear the conversations, but you'll wonder why you don't really see that there's any link between the transmissions because they hop in frequency all the time. When there's not a lot of users, sometimes they just stay put on the same frequency. But if multiple users are on the trunk repeater, they will frequency hop. They will change frequency every time the conversation changes signs. So this type of trunk scanner can follow the conversation, which is kind of cool. And finally, this is a regular scanner radio, which does not have that capability. It's still capable of listening to trunk, but it is, um, it's just not going to be able to follow. So you might miss the, some conversations, even though this will listen in. And last but not least, we have a last type of scanner, which is a communications receiver. This is a very different receiver, and people don't understand how to use them usually. So this ICOM ICR20 is a communications receiver. What's the difference with a communications receiver? Usually a lot of them, now they can mix all systems. You can have a communications receiver that is a trunk scanner, that is a digital scanner. All of that can be combined in one big package. But you might have a communications receiver alone. Usually communications receiver have wider frequency coverage and they will have modes that regular scanners don't have. For example, here I've got the regular AM, FM, FM wide, but I will have CW, Morse code, single sideband, upper and lower sideband capability. That is where the communications receiver is arrives. It is capable of listening in to different types of communications that these are not able to. For example, amateur radio satellites, some of these are in single sideband. I won't be able to listen in on this. But this communications receiver, because of its capability of decoding single sideband signals, will actually work. So this is a communications receiver. Usually also, it won't be most of the scanner radios, including the digital scanner radios, have frequencies that are locked. The ranges are locked in. You have certain frequency ranges and it's frequencies that you can tune in there. Where a communications receiver usually will have no lock. It will be between one and that frequency. For example, this R20 is between 150 kilohertz way down at long wave, all the way up to 3.3 gigahertz in the um, ultra high frequencies. So, uh, and it's a, a continuous coverage. So, um, and you know, they will have all sorts of bells and whistles that regular scanner radios might not have. For example, this one has a recorder, but it has, also has dual um, VFOs. It can listen in to do frequencies at the same time, for example. So they are different types of receivers and people sometimes don't know what type to choose. It all depends on what you're gonna listen to, basically. You want to listen to amateur satellites that transmit in single sideband? You might want a communications receiver. You want to listen to trunk stuff, a trunk scanner. You want to listen to digital, a digital scanner. Some will combine all of that together in one package. Like I said, they are much more expensive, but could be worthwhile. So hope you enjoyed this explanation today. If you enjoyed my videos, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.